it's the YY Westy with PJ Boom Turner. Boom. <laughs> and today I have my good friend Justin here with me. Hi. Tonight I have Irina Puzanova from Russia. I, I have got probably more sleep in the past two and a half months than I've got all year last year combined together. Um, you know, this is just something I really never did much, uh, it, which is sad. This is very, very sad. I will say this. Um, but when you go to the events, man, when you're traveling like a uh, crazy amount of weekends a year, I love my job, you know, dearly. And, uh, you know, when you go to an event, there's the social dancing lasts until, you know, um, depending on which night, you know, from two to sometimes it just doesn't stop. Right. So uh, you kind of have to take care of yourself and, and, and this stuff that I really just didn't do, just to be honest with you. Right. I, I was always finding myself in the ballroom and finding myself on the dance floor, finding myself socializing, finding myself, you know, talking to people at the bar, talking to people, meeting new, new friends. And next thing you know, I was getting three hours of sleep at night, getting back up and repeating the process. And, you get wore down when you do that stuff. I was already staying in home a lot before it even started. Um, and to be honest, because I'm one of the key workers in the UK, for people that don't know outside the DJing, I actually work in a shop. So I've had to be going into a supermarket because I work in food distribution, which is a essential service here in the UK. I'm sure you've heard that word a lot. And so I've been busy doing that two days a week. And then the other times I've still been doing with DJing. So even before this happened i was still doing events during the week i was mainly doing dj prep and preparing competition music and things and i've still done that in the lockdown i mean that is no different for me i was working from home anyway and then obviously i just had spare time mainly at weekends and around those weekends like the friday and monday where i could work overtime in the shop there's been lots of that going around and obviously um trying some other projects as well so i've been keeping well i've been sleeping a whole lot more and if you want to know my theories on sleep just go back to your vows interview with me about last year and i can tell you all about that lots of money and we just bought an apartment before the virus starts so i had oh. some savings and uh, i think that's why i don't feel like like really upset depressed and stuff um and i have husband who still works and gets his money so that's not completely like i have like i have food and stuff Plus, I have some online classes, workshops, where I can still get some money, but of course, you can't compare them with the money you got from the events and from your uh, local teaching, of course. How many events exactly did you miss already? Um, I didn't count. I <laughs> oh. As I saw the news hitting China, I got in touch with my business partner. And to her credit, we had already built into the business plan a sort of savings fund that if something big would hit um i would always make sure we'd have money to sort of fund the business when it started to become serious and we started to get lots of event cancellations we put a procedure in place that we would roll a majority of the contracts over to 2021 that i was hired for either i would chat directly with event directors or um, they would chat to her to sort this out and everything would be frozen so that the price I would charge, the flights that were booked, regardless of refunds, would, would be carried over regardless. So that, that was done. And because I had savings in place, because I'd been saving money, when it hit now, I have had money to really carry me over for nearly a year to 18 months so I don't have to worry so much. And that's down to her. She said, Justin, if something hits, I was always paranoid that we'd been in what's known as a bull market. I follow the markets as a hobby. And I said, something big's going to hit. I didn't know it was this. I had no, you know, forward knowledge it would be this. Good, but because also, people might start uh, developing conspiracy theories. If they yeah, we don't that. need any Justin more of that. Justin knew that. It's no. Justin's fault. My team, a big thanks to Lauren and Andrea. They've been fantastic in this crisis. 
but I wanted to keep my head. There's no point panicking. There's no point doing anything stupid. And um, I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm glad I put that money aside and it's saved because it's now paying me my wage now. And it's it's got a good length to go. So yeah, it's it's all gone well. So yeah, I lost a lot of bookings and I had to get a lot of flight refunds and I had to assist event directors getting flight refunds that were in my name. But to be fair, um, I know we bounce back. I'm optimistic. When that will happen, we we'll cover later on. But yeah, it was it was tough for a time, but I just kept my head and kept going. Uh, you know, I mean, my wife still works full time, uh, so she still she still gets her check. check. Uh, I've had so I've had a couple people reach out for private lessons, so I do private lessons online, um, and so uh, I've had people do the video review. Uh, so I've definitely had like a little bit of work, obviously nothing like a, a weekend. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be on a few of the uh, workshop weekends. It's going, I should say workshop weekends or workshop weeks, however you want to think about it. But uh, I've been doing something. There's this thing called global dance or I think global dance.com or our dance at global. Anyway, something to Sheena, uh, my my routine partner uh tashina king and cameo cross are doing so i was able to do a couple of the virtual or excuse me one virtual summit with them so that was awesome um i did their first one and then they then i'm doing actually this week this entire week there's something called westy unity project um that i'm doing and my class is actually tomorrow night so I've been able to teach a few little events that people are putting online. Um, I actually just recently, last night, started uh, kind of all of our local classes are shut down. And so I kind of took a two month break away from the local classes, but I started my very first virtual kind of quote unquote, I'm gonna use the term local class, um, but I'm opening it up kind of to the world. been some times that I have desperately missed it. There has been some times where I have had been actually um, happy that I'd actually get this time for uh, a reconnection kind of with my family. Um, there's been a reconnection with myself um, and just enjoying my home because uh, it's something I really didn't get to do a lot. I moved into this house two years ago. I've never been home this long. Um, so, so honestly, I, I try not to concentrate on the negative side of, oh my God, I don't have dancing anymore. Um, I, I still have it, you know? I mean, we've been, I've been very fortunate to do some projects, um, uh, still working on a few projects actually, meaning um, there was a video that TJ Bednash wanted to try to do uh, and he contacted, I think like six different pros, uh, you know, we ended up doing this big project where we had to come up with a particular amount of choreography. Um, and so what was so amazing about that, like I got to bring my family in and actually dance with my girls. So they wanted to go over kind of West coast swing. They want to do some basics. So I got to teach, I got to, I got to enjoy dancing with my own family, which is something that never happens. We all need breaks sometimes in our life from, you know, the world, life, hobby, whatever. And I've took this break to really think about my reconnections with my family. And it's been, it's been a really amazing therapy thing for me too, you know, so uh, I've loved it. I, again, I try not to look at the negative side of things. I try to look at the positive sides, um, try to really be optimistic and seeing the glass half full. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. That's been hard been hard some days but you know I got to listen to you know just playlist and then oh my god I just had this it was almost like my heart dropped because I, I just remembered hearing like this playlist at you know Baltic Swing and these songs came on that played Baltic Swing and I just got this huge like memory of me and Alyssa Glanville dancing together oh I night. love this video oh my Jesus it like I 
I even got, like, I stopped the mower and I think I even messaged her and I was like, hey, listen, miss you, miss dancing with you. Just heard a song. Amazing. And this whole playlist reminded me of OTP, reminded me of B-Town Swing, reminded me of these events that, you know, uh, that I would normally be at right now, you know. Um, so uh, I really miss a lot of the social night dancing and the amazing, um, and not just Europe, obviously, in the United States as well. Um, just all over. I miss it. I miss it dearly. Well, I try to think positive and I feel it's time that I can dedicate to myself so I can sleep more, I can rest, I can um, take care of my skin and like do the things that I like. Like I like, I like cooking. Now I can cook whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> right? Plus, you can order everything online. They will bring you sort of their always ingredients and stuff. So I have everything for that. I like to um, play computer games. Now I can play computer really? games. Yes. Oh, wow. I do. Okay, that that's a great discovery. Interesting. Which computer games do you play? Well, uh, mostly I prefer like you know to build the cities, to build something like you get some wood, you get some iron, and so on, so on, so on. It's tough not going to a dance floor um, three, four days a week and not DJing to a crowd that varies from just fifty people up to like nearly a thousand. Um, yeah, I miss the crowd interaction, the social interaction of dance events. I think we all do. I think we had a, a video call setting this up, and we talked about how we haven't seen a lot of our community um, for a while. And the community is the reason I've always said that I am here. And I'm always thankful to them for the fact I still get to DJ and go all, all around the world and DJ for these great people. At the same time, I couldn't sit here and sulk. And um, I wanted to offer value back to the community, but in a different way. And so um, with the time I was saving on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, let's say, uh, I came up with the idea of a podcast. It's been rumbling around in my brain for about six months to a year. But the problem was we already are well served in the West Coast Swing community. You've got yourself doing Wawa Westy and the website and the video casts and the audio cast you put out. We I think we have The Naked Truth. You do a West Coast Swing podcast. There's Phrase Change. I know Diego's just set up Beyond the Triples. And so I went a bit left field and... I'd always have a passion of coaching and sort of motivating. And I thought, well, I'm a broadcaster. I'm not a coach. I'm not a motivator, but I knew one who was. And so Darren and I, before lockdown, had been discussing doing a podcast, but we literally didn't have the time. I was traveling. Um, he was obviously, he actually works as a nurse as well in the health service here. So he's been very busy. But we worked around the challenges of this um crisis and develop something called the coach cast and um the first episode was an absolute disaster the second episode wasn't too much better but as you've learned and as i've learned it's all to do with planning so i took everything i'd learned from the first two or three pilot episodes thought about stuff did a load of tutorials online about how to do video and how to do audio and, and then the second episode was released and it is an absolute good product that I can start from and build from. So the podcast has actually taken up a majority of my time and I've really enjoyed doing it because I can give back to an even wider community of people, not just dancers, but everyone outside that. And I've got some great episodes planned um, right up to episode nine now. As you well know, Yuval, it's, it's all about planning ahead and you probably have loads of episodes planned that I don't know about. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, I'm not a, a health or medical expert and I've just been following what my government has been telling me, what the World Health Organization have been saying. And like, you can make a million predictions about this. Um, but I'm going, going to go along the line of, I haven't followed much mainstream media. I've been getting on with my life. And whenever they choose to do it, I'll just go along with it. Um, I'm not here to criticise governments and what they've done. I'm not here to criticise how they've done it. I genuinely have no idea. And as long as it's concerning, I'll carry on doing it. I really want to fly again. I love flying. It's fantastic. It's been sad to see an industry go to absolute tatters um, in the airline industry. But I don't know. I really can't give a prediction. 
hypothetically, I'd love everything to say, hey, January 1st, 2021, it's all back to normal. But I don't think it will be. So I hope that in, in, in the autumn, we'll dance like mostly like normally. And I think in some other countries, the small communities and small events will appear and uh, will happen. So I hope in August we already can meet up with friends for social dancing, for small maybe workshop weekends. And September, October, November, we will do it like regularly. I have no idea. Uh, uh, that's, that's my ultimate answer to your question. So now we're gonna subcategorize that, right? Um, this all depends on A, is this virus going to mutate? Because all viruses mutate, all viruses create a new strand and new brand and all that other kind of stuff. Is that gonna happen? Don't know. B, will the public be okay, A, to travel, right? Um, will the events run even though that there is a risk of people, you know, knowingly that this virus is still out, knowing that the virus is possibly going to mutate, or knowing, you know, will there be a, um, will there be a vaccination for this? You know, will there be something that happens and we can find the cure for it? Uh, it there's just so many things that kind of go into play in, in saying, when will life go back to normal? Um, I personally believe that, that life won't get back to normal for a while. Some of them will do. Will come and will dance. Like I, I know lots of people who are ready, like if tomorrow there will be events, they will go. Right. I, I'm not sure it's super, super safe, of course. Right. But I know these people. So there will be always people who think that like who miss dancing that much that are ready to dance like like tomorrow. And I know like in some communities, they even started a small social social gatherings, right? Social meeting and try to dance with each other already, uh, even if it's not super legal. So yes there will be people but i don't think like you can run like a mad jam 1000 people like tomorrow right we will start with the small social communities small events and then step by step go back to normal so you think or you hope at least the small events in the fall let's say in september and then maybe big events like when in winter december yeah, yeah winter, winter, I guess. I hope. I hope. Yeah, but as an event director, if like if one people will get sick at your event, like or will be sick at your event, so you will like you take responsibility for all the crowd, right? If we will just spread the infection, it's such a responsibility. Like it will be hard to to deal with that, to live with that. So I hope that they will travel to events. <laughs> you know. Um, I think people are ready to get out. I think people are ready to mingle. I think people are ready to, to, to dance again. I really do believe that people are missing it. Um, I hope that this doesn't hurt our dance because people have now had this break and now they may stay with that break. I mean, I don't know. There's just a lot of, uh, I'm trying to see a lot more optimistic things instead of all the negative things, right? So. I do believe that we'll get back to some type of dancing. Um, normalcy of what we did know it as probably won't get back for a while. Um, I think people are going to be a lot more into the point of uh, very cautious. So I think you'll see probably gloves. You'll definitely see mask. You'll definitely see uh, hand sanitizer if it's available and people, you know, <laughs> if it's in, in mass production around the world. I mean, I'm not one to speak for every Westie because we're all a bit different. I'm going to go to events. I'm not afraid to fly to an event. If I have to wear a face mask for the entire event, if I have to, you know, observe social distancing in the hotel room with my roomie, that's fine. I'll follow any rules. Um, for other Westies, then if you want to support your events, you want to go to them. That doesn't mean I'm saying go if you don't feel comfortable but we need to be there for our event organizers now who have all taken huge financial penalties because of this. 
they've invested a lot in our, our community and also us as staff who work for those events and especially the pro staff who have been working really hard to keep this community together so um i think people will travel there'll be some people there's always going to be people who are cautious and hey i respect their opinion my opinion is different to theirs they have different motivations and sayings but... i think there'll be a drop in attendance but i don't think it's going to be as big as everyone thinks it is but i would just say this to anyone watching it's down to you but i'm going to be there regardless um and i'd love to see you there but if you choose don't to come or choose not to come i'm not going to be offended come when you're ready <laughs>
I'm going to say yes and no. Like, if, if the DJs don't play the music, obviously we'll never know it, right? That's obvious. Um, but I also believe it's up to what event directors want at their event. I think it's the type of environment the event directors want. I think it's what the public is wanting to dance to or not to dance to. Um, you know, I think there's a lot that goes into that. So the DJs are going to play music to keep the floor full, period. You know, period. I, and I don't blame them for the music that they play. Um, so, and, and I get it, but, you know, if we're going to dance to blues music in competition, well, we need to hear blues music late night because that's when bulk of the people are going to be on the floor. We'll see. Maybe we'll see more online sets and stuff for more social pies. You get uh, people like Ken or myself or Chris or, you know, you're so turning up to it or Nick or Pete turning up virtually to your event at a local party instead of maybe just having a local guy play. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting time. And maybe all this onlining we're doing has changed our perception of how we can work. I'm definitely seeing a change in how the pros have addressed it from doing social dancing online to um, obviously doing this Beyond the Triple thing that uh, he's been doing, your, your, your pandemic kind of special. Uh, I'm seeing different change in how people are adapting. So maybe the change you may see is a move to more online conferencing. That doesn't mean events are going to go away. I think it's been good because now the pros, myself, uh, people like yourself doing sort of coverage of the West Coast Swing World, have another outlet now to offer value online. So maybe events continue as normal, we still attend them, but now West Coast Swing has this extra edge of embracing online with Instagram, with TikTok. We've seen that explode. We've seen a lot of moving to online, so maybe they can work alongside the event or the Wednesday night before the event. You have like a big special all the pros doing a q a or something i don't know but maybe uh, these events can offer an extra online aspect where you can't be there maybe you stream the workshop and you have to pay for access to it there, there could be more ways to monetize those events so i think online has a massive opportunity now to offer loads to events that they couldn't offer before and same with the pros teachers event they can offer online packages I think events should stay as they are. We should continue to do them. And I think we should continue to attend them. But now embrace online. Embrace the fact we have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Byte, LinkedIn, all these great video platforms, YouTube, you know. And we can make even better content for the dancers outside of events or merge it in with the events. We've already seen online broadcasting and streaming. So maybe a bit more of that. <laughs> Lots of messages from people who said they do, they they start forgetting how to dance and how to move and they don't even want to take online classes because they are embarrassed because of the pose they had that they, they can't move and I just wanted to say to everyone who is watching right now that it's just in your head that your body that were moving for some time for like for years maybe if you were doing West Coast Swing for years for months before it will it will not forget our muscles are not forgetting things like that you will be able to dance and maybe you will even get back on the next level because your body uh, is going through all the information you get before and will produce something like with a new level so you will be able to dance even better after the pose than before so don't get stressed about that you can't dance or you like you can't move anymore. That's only in your head. Um, I hope to see you all again soon. Um, to be honest, I'm looking for DJing for you again whenever that will be. Meanwhile, obviously, if you're stuck at home or going on a run, obviously listen to the podcast. It's the first time I feel I've ever had to plug something in my life. Um, but it means a lot to me if you could subscribe to the podcast and also leave a rating on it or any feedback. And that's the bit I'm going to focus on now. So if you want to be a guest on the show, obviously give me a shout via the website. Uh, or at my Twitter, but I'll get your Val to post that all up. Um, if not, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you for your time with Val. I appreciate it. And um, hopefully you, see you back on the f f dance floor soon, hopefully. And the WA list. 
So, oh yes, that's still available and still being updated monthly. Yes. So I'm glad I'm glad someone's paying attention. Um, yeah, the uh, the WA list still exists. It's still being updated um, monthly. Many thanks to Yaval's push on his website. He took it over 500 followers before his article is 499, and it's now gone to 525. So thank you everyone nice. who's following, and I really appreciate the fact that you can take away. Uh, the music there and if you want to use it to have a social dance to i'm certainly going to be happy that is still updated monthly that's still being done i'm still looking for great music for you guys and it still exists now just know that there's everybody you can reach out to like listen i've had my bad days i've had i've had my non-motivational days i've had no inspiration i've had no motivation you know to do anything and i've had days where i've just sat around the house and done nothing and really missing people being around people and so you can get yourself in a pretty bad mental space. Um, hell, I went through it just a week and a half ago. Uh, and it's okay. You, we're, we're allowed to be that. But just make sure you can reach out to somebody to get it out, to get, to get your their thoughts out, just to talk, check on people. Um, you know, we, we're, we're needing to support each other. The community needs to support each other right now. And it's very important that we we – look out for each other during times like this, that we can't see each other. We can't be physically um, around people. Uh, so I do believe that, you know, mental health and, and keeping yourself in a very good space is extremely important right now. Um, so just know that everybody is ready and willing to talk. Um, so I've had people reach out to me that that's been amazing. Like, Hey man, how you doing? How's things going? And, and it's been in a bad day. And I was like, you know, today's not real great. I'm like, Oh, let's talk it out. Like blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it's just amazing getting that, that message. Like, Hey man, just calling in and checking on you. It's, it's, it, it makes you feel that you still have friends instead of just acquaintances. Um, a lot of times we go to these events and, you know, we don't know anybody past a sugar push and, you know, that's another thing I definitely would change is getting to know people uh, on a little bit more than just an event or a dance base. Um, I think our community could really use some uh, let's get to know you um, kind of thing. You know, uh, I would love to see that happen throughout the world. I would love to develop something at, at an event called, uh, you know, PJ's Corner, uh, meaning that we go to the bar. And we all kind of like have a beer together and we just talk about life and no dance, like none. I don't want it. Like I, I would, I want to get to know the people. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know the public. I want to get to know, you know, student, not student. I, I, that's absolutely irrelevant. I want to be able to connect with people at PJ's corner, you know, or hell PJ's bar. Like I, I don't care. You know, uh, I'm the dude that, that, uh, I'm just super approachable. I, I want people to come up. I don't want people to say, oh my God, PJ, he's the pro. He's like, like you know what the hell with that? I, I'm just like you. You know, I put my pants on every day the way you put your pants on. Um, you know, so there's nothing, as far as a person to a person, I love that connection. And uh, that's something that I've kind of been thinking about, like during this time, you know, like, hey, how can I connect with people? What's a different way at, at advanced events? Um, and to develop, you know, PJ's corner would be kind of a fun thing, I guess, you know, uh, you know, let's, let's, I would love to do that someday and just connect with you. Hey, what does people do for a living? What, what do you have family? Do you have brothers? Do you have sisters? What food do you like? What's your favorite color? Do you like sunsets? I, you know, just bullshit questions, you know, and, and bullshit questions that mean so much to get to know somebody, you know, um, I think that we should get involved with relationships not just acquaintances mm -hmm. i mean obviously people has to be a little bit more vulnerable and able to get to know someone and and get to explain information and and that kind of thing you know um you know for instance like i how you treat people is how you want to be treated right that's just a big that's just a golden rule in life you know how you treat people is how you want to be treated and you know, I, if you become a friend, like I, just for an example, like I want to know what you like to drink. Just give an example. Right. So obviously 
dude, you like Corona. If I see you at an event and they have a Corona, hell, I may buy you a Corona. Say, hey, here's a Corona. Let's have a beer together. You know, like I, I get to see that. And if I know that about you, that's an investment. To invest in someone means so much to people. And sometimes that investment is so small that people may overlook it. Like, you know, knowing someone's birthday. Like that's, that's some people that don't mean nothing. I get it. You know, for some people, it really means a lot. So different things for different people, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yes. But at least I take that and I try to take that investment whenever I see you and have that personal kind of relationship or that personal thing or, you know, that's what I try to do. And you can see all the pros are all listed. They have their own profile on there, um, including myself. Profile. Uh, profile. No, profile, right? <laughs> uh, to do. Good dad joke. Yeah. So anyway, I dressed up as Tina Turner, right? And then I rip off the jacket. I rip off the pants. I throw it behind me and have this, this, crazy silver sequence dress on somebody slams a damn uh wig on me and they give me a mic and next thing you know we're just going we're, we're, we're working on me and I, like, an antarctic west coast swing event well there's a new idea for any of the event directors watching an antarctic antarctica swing open. <laughs> maybe one day maybe one yeah. day <laughs> swing it like it's cold <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting because the the first few weeks when it hit, they were um, there was no toilet paper in the toilet paper aisle. Um, of I, strangely enough, Man, I don't get it. I really I, don't. I frankly don't understand it. And Why do people buy so much toilet? Paper? Why do they need so much? I mean, welcome to the human condition. Um, but uh, in our store. Um, we sold a lot of trampolines. I have no idea why trampolines became um, massive or huge or a viral hit. I don't know. Maybe there's a TikTok video going about. Um, so when the baby is born, you recommend immediately getting pregnant with another one. <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> <I suppose. laughs> 